In this video, we're talking about ethics. Hi, welcome to Studio Sec. Thank you for watching. Like this video if it's helpful, comment down below with your thoughts on cybersecurity ethics and subscribe for more content. I will be posting every week. Cybersecurity is an interesting field, not just from the technical side, but from the philosophical side. Cybersecurity Cybersecurity professionals are charged with protecting sensitive data. Whether you're a defender with a lot of access or you're the attacker with a lot of expertise, this kind of power can go to a lot of people's head. Before we dive in, we need to understand what exactly it is that we're talking about. We're not just talking about the law, we're talking about the ethical side. And so we're gonna make a certain distinction here. The law ultimately is a deterrent, meaning that if you commit a certain action, then there may be certain punishments. However, that does not guarantee that certain people will do the right thing. Ethics, however, is what keeps people from doing certain things or may enable them to do certain things. So what exactly are we looking at? Well, with law, of course, we're talking about the legal and the illegal. And with ethics, we're talking about what is good and evil. Laws are generally framed uh, by the popular understanding of what morality is in a given populace. For instance, generally any person on earth can agree that murder is bad. But whether or not certain traffic rules are enforced is another thing. In cybersecurity, it is legal for a cybersecurity professional to come up with an agreement with a certain organization or individual to perform a penetration test, or that is to use hacking tools and techniques uh, to gain access to the target within a specific scope. However, it is illegal for a cybersecurity professional to, without permission, target an organization or an individual using cybersecurity tools and techniques outside of an agreed upon scope or simply without permission at all. And so with that, we encounter two basic understandings of what hackers are. You have black hat hackers and you have white hat hackers. Black hats break the law. They hack without permission. They use their expertise to do whatever they want. White hats follow the law. They come up with agreements with organizations and individuals. They hack within a scope and they provide a report so that way that organization can enforce better security down the road. However, in a lot of circles, you will encounter conversation about gray hat hackers. And gray hat hackers uh, can be any number of things. They can be a mixture of a white hat hacker and a black hat hacker. What that means is maybe a cybersecurity professional or anybody with cybersecurity expertise using cybersecurity tools and techniques illegally without permission uh, on the, from the target to target maybe evil individuals or organizations. For instance, any random person deciding to go out and target ISIS, while their methods are illegal, because obviously they probably don't have ISIS's permission and uh, a scope to hack within, but the certain tools and techniques that they're using isn't legally sanctioned by any country or organization. Obviously there can be legal exceptions to this, but we're not gonna get into that quite yet. Ultimately, what we need to understand uh, is that good and evil are absolutes. And what an absolute is, is that if something is to be believed, then it should be believed to its fullest extent. It's kind of like a, it's like a Boolean statement. If it is true, then we should believe that something is true to its fullest extent. And likewise, if something is false, we should believe that something is false to its fullest extent. Understand that the abolishment of the absolute creates an environment where morality is obfuscated and evil can hide in plain sight and good can be marginalized to just the sidelines. Therefore, we must insist that the absolute exists, that good exists to its fullest extent and likewise evil exists to its fullest extent. So in the legal illegal framework, good may be legal and evil may be illegal. Now we can get into all kinds of debates on whether certain laws are good and evil and that's a topic for another time. What is important is that we understand that becoming a criminal is probably not good and that uh, following the law is not evil. That doesn't necessarily make it inherently good or evil, it just makes it a not function. Of course, with something like this, there can be other exceptions made and comment down below if you'd like to discuss any of them. The important thing about cybersecurity is that in cyberspace, rarely do good and evil present themselves as absolutes. Although they are polar opposite, they find ways to intermesh themselves in our industry just as they do in any other industry around the world. Now, however you decide to define good and evil, it is important that you do it coherently and that it is consistent. Whether you're finding it from 
a religious text, for me that would be the Bible. Uh, or if you are framing it from some other understanding of how the world works. It has to be consistent and it has to be intrinsically good. Now on the topic of gray areas or, you know, as we talked about before, gray hat hackers, it's important to separate out good and evil in these environments. Like I said before, not having an absolute obfuscates where good and evil lie. And that's exactly what a gray area is. And so in separating out good from evil in a gray area, you begin to identify whether something is intrinsically good or intrinsically evil. Let's talk about a couple of fun gray areas to talk about here. And some of them may be a bit more clear than others, but let's just get the conversation started. Remember, the comment section is open for this to be a conversation. Say you're a cybersecurity professional working for a large company. And that large company, and let's just say it's a retailer, uh, is aware that its products are made using cheap human labor on another continent. Let's also say that because of the size of this company, it may be affiliated with certain government organizations that are inherently evil. However, your job specifically is to protect the private data of consumers on your continent who may not exactly be aware of what's going on abroad. I'm sure we can all agree that it's probably evil for you to go against your job description and, and violate the trust of the consumer and the company by leaking private information publicly. Because of that, it must also be unethical for you to not do your job to the best of your ability, allowing an attacker to steal that information. So what are your options? Well, probably just institute change from within. Generally, change is easily accepted from within an organization than from without. Let's talk about another example. You're you're part of an online forum, it may be more hidden than some other online forums, and you come across some criminals, maybe some terrorists or human traffickers. Now we already said before that it's illegal to breach cyber infrastructure without permission. And we already said that it is not good to break the law. Therefore, it is probably not good to attack these people. But isn't it good to catch the bad guys? Isn't that what we're really all about? Think about Batman. He was basically committing assault and battery all across Gotham City uh, in pursuit of vigilante justice. Was Batman inherently good or was he evil? What's important is that you make sure that those that are legally sanctioned to catch these individuals are able to do their job. And if perhaps your passion is catching these people, then maybe you should become legally sanctioned to do that. Maybe you should join a law enforcement agency or become part of the intelligence community tasked with catching cyber criminals. Now, of course, we wanna talk about your day-to-day -day tasks and the, the people that you'll interact with every single day. Remember that they may not necessarily be as woke as you. They may not understand what's going on around the world. They might just want to get through work. So make sure that you have grace wherever you go. And of course, remember that nobody is perfectly good and nobody is perfectly evil. This can often change the way that you think about other people that you may like or you may not like. Also remember that if you are willing to do good, then that is because of the goodness in your heart. And if you're willing to do evil, then that's because of the evil in your heart. Cybersecurity can be very complicated and the conversations can get very interesting. From the technical to the grand scale, you need to make sure that you're staying aware of your environment and where you fit in. So let's continue this conversation. Like if this video was interesting at all, comment down below if you wanna talk about cybersecurity ethics more and subscribe for more content I'll be posting every week. Thank you.